Have I got a word for you for 2022? It's Donna Schaumbach, and I'm so happy you could be with us this brand new year, 2022, on Power Connection. You know, I don't know about you, but I like to think about what God has in store for me every time that calendar flips. But sometimes I've gotten into a trap of looking for what the prophets are saying to see what, what they're hearing in the Spirit, and that's okay. But I feel like there's a missing element, and that is every believer, that's you and me, we need to be so filled with the Holy Spirit and in tune with the Spirit that we hear what Jesus himself is saying to us. Because listen, I believe with all of my heart, Jesus is taking out the scales and he's weighing us in his balance. He has a word for us, and often it's going to include repentance. I was reading from Revelation the past few weeks, and in Revelation chapter 19, and I'm going to start here. At the end of verse 10, it's very clearly said, worship only God, but the essence, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation today, for the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness of Jesus. You know, I hear every type of prophecy about politics and about governments and about how the church needs to be. But how many times do we hear people saying that our assignment in any given year is to give a clear witness of Jesus? Let me ask you this question. If you were in Walmart or at the gas station and you saw that somebody was overwhelmed with grief or needed to know clearly who Jesus is and you knew they were filled with questions about who he said he was and and how you know he's God, not just experientially, but from the word of God, would you be able to give a clear witness to who Jesus is? You see, we all want to get a new word, but we have oftentimes been out of the word of God. For to be in the word of God is to know Jesus. In that same chapter, speaking about Jesus and his eyes being like flames of fire and his head having many crowns, it says, He wore a robe dipped in blood and his title was the word of God. You see, the more we think about Jesus, we have to think about him as our Savior, as our soon coming King, as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And when we know he took his white, pure garment and dipped it in his own blood so that you can be saved, so that I can be saved. If we know that he is the word of God, our whole heart should be given to seeking him, his face, to knowing him better. I've been reading all through Revelation, and I love especially the end. You know, when you think about Revelation, it was apocalyptic literature given to John when he was on the Isle of Patmos. It was a revelation that he uh, was given when God's people were going through unprecedented persecution. And there's so, con- so many types of fantastical images, so many things that we don't fully understand, especially when we lay them on the timeline of history. But there's one thing that's crystal clear, and that is there is an enemy that's trying to steal you away from right relationship with Jesus. But if you serve Jesus, live for him, even unto death, he has planned such a blessing for you, a blessing for all eternity. He has has envisioned for us what it's going to be like to be living with him 
in eternity. And I love to read those last chapters. I don't like to read about the wars and, and the beast and the blood and the destruction. I like to read about our victorious Lord and how he's calling his saints to come and live with him. But I want you to hear some important words because we have to rehearse them. We have to remember them. He says, Anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. I want you to think about that because recently, uh, just yesterday as a matter of fact, one of America's most beloved television stars went to her reward. She was just this far from being 100 years of age. She was kind of a household name. I knew her when I was growing up. And I had recently heard her on an interview. And somebody was asking her, are you afraid of death? And she just glibly said, no, I'm not afraid of death. I think it's going to be a vast new experience. I believe it's going to be an exciting thriller. I believe I'm going to explore new universes. She says, some people have religion, but I have a belief that it's going to be a grand expedition. When I heard those words, I was pretty sure that she didn't know who Jesus was. Because anybody who knows Jesus, when you're living that close to eternity, that's a time for introspection. Lord, is there anything standing between me and you? Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that you shed for me. I'm coming to see you, Lord. And yes, it's going to be a great adventure, but only because of who you are. But this is the thing that saddens me. If people don't have that realization. If that woman did not have that realization, the Bible says if her name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that she would be cast into a lake of fire. That's a pretty scary thing. How could someone that everybody loves, who thinks they're great, they're funny, they've lived well on this earth, how could they be cast into a lake of fire? Remember what Jesus said? He said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but should lose his own soul? Jesus is the Word of God who speaks to us words of comfort but also words of caution. And you and I, as we're coming into 2020, and we see so many signs that every generation has seen, but it seems like they've been intensified. As we say, Lord, could this be the time frame when you come home? There's really two messages that should quicken our hearts. One, get ready, because that's what Jesus taught. Prepare yourself. Look up. Live in such a way that you can endure to the end, even if it means enduring to death. But the other thing is, not just get ready, but get busy. It's not time for amassing things or running after the pleasures of this world, but to let people know that Jesus is who he says he is, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and one day soon we'll stand in front of him. You know, I was, as I read the book of Revelation, and I encourage you to do so, because Jesus is crystal clear. He says it time and time again throughout the book that there are people who are going to make it to heaven, and there are people who are not going to make it to heaven. The ones that are going to make it to heaven are those that have dipped their robes in the blood of Jesus Christ, the ones that have endured to the end, they've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They're vocal. They give clear witness to who Jesus is in their life. But there are others that won't go. And I believe that includes some that think they're okay with God. He said, if you're immoral in any way, if you commit adultery or sexual sin, if you're given to idolatry in anything, you Put other things before God. If you're a liar and you don't live the truth, he says those things 
will take you right into the pit. And he doesn't say it just one time. These are things that God hates. And anybody who loves Jesus is ridding themselves of the spirit of this world and all of the things that attach themselves to our spirit, man. We've got to live in the word of God and let the word of God do its work of washing us on a daily basis, of cleansing us. This is how we go into a new year, saying, Jesus, I want to live ready and I want to live busy, giving clear testimony to who you are, whether it's praying for somebody or sharing my testimony or doing something for your kingdom. The other thing that's very consistent throughout Revelation is that God's people who love him, they do good deeds. Now, that doesn't mean they earn their, earn their salvation that way, but there's an outgiving of that love, of that message, whether it's helping poor people or giving to somebody in need or comforting someone, praying for somebody. Things that we say, I do this as unto the Lord. That's your word for the year. Get into the word of God. Rekindle an on-fire relationship with Jesus. Let him help you take inventory of every area of your life. Let him purge you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And let him light a fire under you so that you're not lukewarm and he spits you out. But that he sees this one is ready to give clear witness to who I am. Let's pray right now. And listen, if you have never received Jesus into your heart and into your life, don't put it off one more day. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Ask the Lord to live in your heart and open up the word of God so that you can live a life that's pleasing to him. Father, I thank you for this one who's watching today. First, I pray for the one who needs to get back into right relationship with you. Lord, I ask for the Holy Spirit of conviction to fall upon them, that you would pinpoint areas of our life that have to come under your scrutiny. Lord, would you open up the word of God? And as we read, Lord, I pray that you'd say, oh, that's an area that I got to get right. Help me, Lord Jesus. Father, I just ask for forgiveness of, of not honoring who Jesus is, but going after the things of the world. Will you change me from the inside out? I thank you, Lord, as people are praying that prayer, that you will meet them with your presence right now. Thank you, Lord. And Father, for every believer, Lord, we want to hear a word that's telling us that 2022 is going to be a great overcoming year, and I believe it will be. But it only will be overcoming to the degree that the word of God is in us and that we're living the word of God in our life. So I'm asking you for a fresh baptism of hunger, for the word of God, for prayer, for the person of Jesus Christ, that we might live a life that gives honor to his name. Father, if they need a healing touch, I pray that you would do that right now as healing is the children's bread. Stretch out your hand and touch them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Just lift your hands before him. Give God praise. Thank him for who he is. And listen, I want to encourage you, when you have a moment... Will you share this teaching? So many people need to hear it. And I, would, I know you can help me if you'll just share it with a friend. Like it, click the bell, do all those things that will help us get the word out more. And then go by our website, check out all of our resources. Make sure you check out the newest book that I wrote. People are telling me they love it. Especially, I've heard a lot of men tell me that they liked it. In fact, one of the men told me he cried from chapter eight all the way to the end. So there's good stuff in there for you, especially if you have someone in your family who needs to get back into relationship with God. Make sure you, while you're there, you sign up for our newsletters, become a partner, and sow a seed while you're there. And thank you for all you do to help us keep Power Connection on the air. We love you, we bless you, and we'll see you next week. I'm so happy you could join us today on Power Connection. Please stay connected with Shambach Ministries. 
make sure you check out our website. I'd love you to also look into being part of our Shambok School of Ministry, especially if you feel a call on your life. And please help us get the word out to others. Make sure you like us, subscribe, and ring that bell. And that way you'll help us reach so many more people with the truth of the scripture. And don't forget when you go to that website, sow your best gift into Shambok Ministries today. We'll see you next time.